Now, hands up if you remember when you were in grade one at school. Like most of you should probably remember that. Okay, well, I don't know about how you guys found year one, but for me, grade one was the time of my life. I knew who I was, where I was going, and exactly what I wanted to do with my life, which I think is a little bit weird for a six-year-old to be so confident, but I just knew what I wanted to do. And when I was in grade one, I really wanted to be an artist. That was like the dream that was on my heart, and I loved to paint and draw anything creative. I, I loved it at six years old. Now, does anybody here like to draw or paint? Like, is anyone into art here? So I can see a few hands. That's pretty awesome. So I've brought some drawings along to show you guys today that I've done, but um, I'm going to give you some context before I show you them. They're quite weird and colorful, but for me, art is more than just a hobby. Like, it is an awesome hobby, and it's really fun, but for me, it's more of an outlet. And when I'm frustrated with the whole world, and I have just had enough of everything, and I feel like going and doing something destructive or going and yelling at someone, instead of going and doing something I'm going to regret, I sit down with a piece of paper in my pencil case and I draw everything that I think and feel and even, even my prayers kind of end up on paper. Like everything going on in my brain is on paper. And I find it really useful. It saves me from a lot of other destructive things. So if you love to draw, you should try it sometimes. It seriously is really helpful in expressing how you feel. So the drawings I'm going to show you are really abstract and they don't really make sense until I explain them. But bear with me. It's going to be okay. They're going to be up on the screens. It's all going to make sense, I promise. So this first drawing here, this is called, he can't help that he sees through a green light when everybody else around him sees through a red light. Now the reason I drew this picture is because I am from a super practical family. I have a mum and a dad, a big brother and a little sister. Now my dad is a policeman, my mum is a nurse, my big brother builds houses, and my little sister in grade 11 wants to go into the police as well. So my whole family are super practical, very focused, very hardworking. They're the kind of people that just know how to get things done. And that's awesome, there's nothing wrong with that. But I am like nothing like the rest of my family. And growing up, I was majorly the odd one out. I was always the kid who was sitting in the corner, drawing or writing a story or a poem or singing around the house. And no one in my family ever joined in with what I was doing. And because of that, I thought there was something really wrong with me. And I was like, man, why am I so weird? Like, what is going on? And it's kind of taken me this long to realize, you know what? It's okay to be different to the people around you. We are not designed to all be exactly the same. That'd be like robots. Don't you think that'd be a boring world? It's totally okay. So if you feel different in any way to the people around you, don't be worried about it. It's totally, totally okay to feel different. Now, right down the bottom of this picture, there is a little girl on a ladder, and she's reaching up for the table, but she can't quite get there yet. And this is my future spread out before me on a table, and I can't reach it. And I drew this because I find it really hard to just be happy where I am in life. In primary school, I was like, oh man, I cannot wait to be a big kid in high school. I'm going to be so grown up and sophisticated. And I got to high school, and I was like, get me out of here. I've had enough of this. Anyone ever had that feeling of like, get me out of here? Maybe a couple of you. Yeah, so I, I had a pretty bad attitude when I was in high school. But then I thought, well, I'll graduate, I'll go to university, start all over again, I'll be so independent. And I got to uni and realized it wasn't quite the dream I was expecting it to be. It required a lot of hard work and I wasn't independent at all. And so I realized, man, the problem this whole time, my whole life, has been my attitude and not my circumstances. Because it didn't matter where I was, I always wanted to be somewhere else. And on this particular day, the prayer that was kind of on my heart was like, God, what the heck do you have in store for my life? I have no idea what I'm doing. And I didn't hear God whisper in my ear or anything like that. But what I did get was a real sense of calm down, even if you're a little person down on the ground with no idea what's going to come next. I really do believe God has our future spread out before us on a table. And it's not our job to know what the future holds. I think it's our job to take it one day at a time. Just chill out and enjoy where you are even if it's school, because believe me, even school doesn't last forever. This picture here uh, is based on a pretty abstract phrase. Um, the phrase is, oh, why don't you entertain this idea? So there's a blob there with a the hat on, and he's a bad idea. And I'm entertaining it by letting it into my kitchen anyway. Now, this is symbolic for my life, because the bad ideas that I have 
are telling myself that I'm not good enough, that I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, that if I get up there in front of all those people, who the heck is going to listen to anything I have to say? Like everyone's going to laugh at me. So I have very real fears that I have to push past to be able to do what I love to do. And this is what I love to do, but believe me, it can be pretty intimidating sometimes talking in front of you guys. And so I drew this to really remind myself not to entertain bad ideas in whatever shape or form they come in. And you know, maybe you guys have some bad ideas about yourselves too. Maybe they're different to mine, but just know that there are no ideas worth entertaining and they do not go away easily once you invite them in. Now this picture here, uh, this is all about self-criticism because I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person here who struggles with criticizing themselves. And this is called, my fears and flaws are magnified in my mind's eye and sometimes they get the better of me. And for me, I'm a real perfectionist. I hate the fact that I make mistakes. I hate the fact that I'm not perfect and that sometimes I get scared of things. And I really do wish that I was perfect. And I've realized the way that we see ourselves sometimes is kind of like looking through a giant magnifying glass and only concentrating on the flaws and the things that we don't like about ourselves. And that can become a really destructive way to live your life because not only are you critical of yourself, but it translates to other people and you start judging other people by your standards of perfection too. And it's a really bad cycle to get caught up in. And for me, it's something daily that I struggle with. Every single day I have to remind myself that it's okay that I've, I'm flawed and I make mistakes. And it's also okay that the people around me aren't perfect either. This is not a perfect world and no one is ever gonna achieve that. So it's good to let go and take a step back and just realize that. This picture here is all about dreams in life, whether it's a career goal or a family goal, a travel goal. Maybe you're really feeling called by God to go somewhere, to do something, but you're sort of putting it off and thinking, God, call back later, I'm busy, thanks. Whatever that dream or that calling is, it's way on the other side of the room. And a lot of people stand right where they are and think, okay, I'm just going to fix everything up in my life till it's perfect, or I'll wait until tomorrow and then I'll go and start that dream. Then I'll go and get to that goal that I had set for myself. But like I was saying, that day that we're perfect never comes. I'm never going to wake up and have a convenient time to start trying to achieve my dreams. It's just not going to happen. And the girl there is looking at these hot air balloons. And she's thinking, man, I just want to jump in and sail away and start my adventure. But at the same time, she has these bags in her hands weighing her down. And that stuff is like life baggage that piles up after a while. And it's different for everybody, obviously, because everybody's story is different. Maybe your baggage that you carry around is telling yourself that you're not good enough, that you're a failure. Maybe your baggage is other people who have put you down your whole life. Or maybe your baggage is something really painful that you've had to go through. But whatever it is, just know that there is no baggage that God cannot handle. Sometimes we think, nah, God couldn't look after that. God couldn't deal with that. But just know there is nothing that can stop you. If you have something that you want to do and you can achieve it, there is nothing that can hold you back. And you know, for me, joining Iron and Clay and going traveling, that was a pretty exciting goal, a pretty exciting dream. And I actually turned it down. I said no, because I was, I was too shy. I'm an introvert, so I need space. I was so worried about leaving my friends and family behind. I didn't know these bunch of randoms on this tour bus. Like, are you kidding me? And I was like, no thanks. I thought it looked like an awesome opportunity and I really felt called to it, but I wasn't ready. And I really felt like God was saying to me, you know what, just go. Just go. And I was like, God, seriously, this is not, I'm not ready. Like, I cannot do this. And eventually I gave in though, because I really strongly felt like this is where I should be. And I had to step out. And I had to let go of a lot of bags that I had that were made of fear and self-doubt and worry. And it's the best decision I've ever made. So I want to encourage you guys as well. When opportunities come up and your dreams are like staring you down, don't be afraid and don't let stuff hold you back because you have awesome futures ahead of you.